Hi, Paul. Um, um, even though I don't think your name's on it, I understand that you wrote the Space Corps Survival Manual book. Because <laughs> <Like me, yeah. laughs> it's, um, it's funny, it's good and it's funny. It's, it's, it's a bit of a weird one in terms of fitting in to everything else talk. I just wonder if, I mean, if you can remember, if you tell us a bit about how that came about. And what it came time. about because we'd done the Red Wolf Diary the year before, or two years before, I think it was, think it was the year before, and, the, and it got to number three on the Sunday Times bestseller list, and they did really, really well. And, um, and so there was a lot of pressure from Penguin, I think we published it, to do another Christmas, Christmas book. And so it, and we kind of faffed around for ages about what the Christmas book would be. And, and because, and, and, and obviously Doug is very proprietorial about all aspects of the Red Dwarf, as you can imagine, of the Red Dwarf universe. So, and so we thought maybe if there was something that was slightly outside the, the direct Red Dwarf universe, it would be easier to, to write material that contradict things that had already, that had already gone into the Red Dwarf universe. And at, at the time, there was a big vogue for those kind of survivalist books, you know, about... I mean, now that it's television shows, but then it was books about what would happen if we dropped in the middle of a forest and eating bark and making fires, and there was this thing called the SAS Survival Manual that had come out at the time that was a bestseller, and, and so we thought, let's kind of spoof those, let's do the Star, the, uh, the Star Wars Survival Manual. So, but it had to be written incredibly quickly, because, um, I don't know if you know, in publishing, apparently a Christmas book, if it doesn't get into the shops by the end of September, beginning of October, it's not going to sell anything. And so we had like a few weeks basically to put this, to put this thing together, and it was, it was an incredibly intense period of writing. And obviously, I, I, mean, I, I, I don't write books as a rule. I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not Doug, I'm not Robert, I, I, I'm not, and I don't do prose, basically. So, um, so it was this kind of real steep learning curve, just, just doing the amount of, sort of comedy that, that, that was in there. And, um, and I, and, um, I did some cartoons for it, because we couldn't afford to employ cartoonists. And I wanted to be a cartoonist, but I stopped. Did you draw the, the flip book that I drew the flip book, I did love the flip book, which is what I used to do when I was at school, that's exactly what I used to do in the corner of my life when I was at school. So yeah, so yeah that, was, that, that was all, that was all in the, in the absence of any, anyone decent to do. So, um, so yeah, that, it, so it was a weird, I mean, it, I, was very, I was quite pleased with it, but I'd like to have more time on it, definitely, definitely. And it didn't, do, it didn't sell anywhere near as well as the, the diary. Uh, thank you. You're, you're the only person I've ever met in Boston. So. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, do you have a personal favourite character in Red Dwarf? And do you find one character easier to write for than another? That's a very good question. Um, I used to really like writing one liners for Cat, because I like writing one liners. Um, I, do I find anyone easier to write for this? I, I don't know. I mean, the interesting thing about writing other people, other people's shows, which I've done quite a lot of, is you have to kind of find a way of pastiching their style, so you have to find your way into to their heads and find out, you know, how, how Doug and Rob write the characters, how you've got to write the character. And, um, and the, and the good thing about Red Dwarf by the time I came aboard was the actors that were all, they were the characters. I mean, you, you, you're in that American kind of sitcom sense of, of there's always no acting required, they are just the, the character fits the, the actor like a glove. And so I was always really conscious of the fact that the, the, the actors knew the characters a lot better than me and, uh, and, and having to make them, them sound good. But I, I think, yeah, I think I really enjoyed writing the, the one lines of Cat. And I, got some, and, and I used to write one lines of Cat, and because I, I was a script editor, I actually got. A lot of cat one liners into shows that I didn't write. The, 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 so it was always good. It's always good when you, because they, 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 they didn't always used to tell me. So I'd be watching the episode, but I didn't know so that I didn't write and hear one of my lines. I was like, oh, that's great. And um, so that was, that was always fun. And that was often cat. Um, I, do, I do enjoy writing for Rumi because, I mean, any comedy writer enjoys writing. Enjoys writing. Sarcasm like, like like is, is, is great fun to write. So, uh, so, but they were all, they were all the Georgia write for, and they were all, and they were all, it, it's a sitcom that's full of funny characters, there are no straight characters, there are, there are no characters to, just to feed, to feed, feeding uh, the, um, the, the guests for the funny character to do the punchline, so, uh, so it's, a, it's a gift for any comedy writer, so yeah, my enjoy, I don't like it for all, yeah. Any more questions? Yes? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, have you got a personal favourite of your own lines that you've written for Red Dwarf? Ooh. The, uh, the only one I can remember, because I was talking about Cat, was um, the one. There was a line like the way Cat said, "We've been copied more times than the the um, the tennis player, the tennis player the scratching a butt." Yeah, and I, I I really thought that was my favorite. Yeah. Um, God, I can't think of any others. I can't. 
goodness. Oh, salty goodness. Yeah, which apparently got, I wasn't in the studio, but it apparently got a huge round. It got such a big laugh that they actually had to take it out of the editing the, the length of the laugh. But um, yeah, salty, salty goodness where uh, I'm dressing for and being really, yeah. Yeah, that was. Do you, uh, I know you write, you wrote with Robert Llewellyn, the one about Jane Austen worlds. Did you actually write the, uh, the scene where they blew up the gazebo? No, I'm afraid not. I just script edited that one, so, uh, so that was all. That, I mean, most of the, the content in that was, was Rob Bob Lowe, so I can't, I can't remember whether, whether, whether I had any lines in it, but that was a fantastic scene. And, um, it was the fiber group called something, wasn't it? It was, yeah. it was like a you major. Really major. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I actually wasn't there that day when I came in and they said, and they said oh yeah, the, we, we blew up, we, we blew up half the surrey yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, and the fiber game called, and um, I, was, I, I always seem to miss the, the fun bits like that, because uh, they kept me in the cupboard, basically, the scripture just covered and um, it's, that let me out occasionally. Do you have any importance to how the thing was presented? Because it's like a sort of game show host. Yeah, um, the original idea was that he was going to be more like a Bond villain, and um, they were going to, they, they talked about him, Patrick Stewart to do the voice and stuff like that. And um, But then I think it might have been Ed, it might have been Doug, but, but the made the point that that was pretty funny, and, uh, and that since he was like, um, he had quite a lot of dialogue, it might be good to come up with a, a kind of funnier personality for him. So we, so we came up with the idea of him being like a yeah, like a game show host, so just to give him a bit of energy, because otherwise he, he, would, he, he, he was sounding a bit too kind of divorced, a bit too sort of, um, it didn't sound like it was in a comedy show, it sounded like we were trying to write something that was really, really, really scary, and, uh, and so yeah, and then, and then we got Gary and he, and he kind of refined that. He would be using energy anyway. Yeah, he would have, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of like a group decision to make him, to make him a game show, because the first version it didn't, really, didn't really work. So uh, even though that was that was my that was my original thing was he's going to be really scary, he's going to be really cold and calculating, and and um, it just wasn't funny. So um, so we need something a bit, bit a bit bigger. And also because again because he was kind of an, an abstract concept rather than a physical, but you need to put as much character and personality in, into the voices you, you possibly could. Oops. Um, was there anything that you've written that um, you either like, weren't sure, too sure about it when you were writing it, but you were just played off very well and you were very relieved, or, or vice versa, you, you thought was brilliant and this, for some reason didn't come through? Well, there were, there were lots that I thought was brilliant that didn't come through. Um, tons. I mean, I, there, there, there was a whole script. What was that script ended for? The, the first version of. The first, oh, God. There was a whole script that I, that, 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 that I wrote that, that was never. That was, that was, I mean, there were bits of it were cannibalized, or well, I cannibalized later in the There was a lot of sex. There was a lot of sex. It was. It was. <laughs> Between them. Kachowski and Lister, was it? It was. It was. Kachowski and Rimmer. It was, yeah. It perfume was. Thing. Perfume thing, yeah. Yeah. And it was. Um, I, I, I actually still. I found it the other day because I was about to move. I found this before script that, 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 uh, that I thought I thought was the best thing ever at the time. Because it was obviously rubbish. So, um, but there was some good cake in it that, that found their way into into other shows. So that was that was that was probably the biggest single thing that that I didn't get on. So yeah. And um, what was the other part of the question? Um, Vice versa, was there anything that uh, did get on that just didn't get the reaction you hoped it would? <laughs> oh, you didn't think would you didn't think would turn out uh, too like you weren't too sure about it when you were writing it, but it got a great reaction. I wasn't I wasn't too sure about uh, just because it was British TV and it was coming from a small tiny budget. I wasn't too sure about the dinosaur in in <laughs> Which was fantastic. I was thinking, how the hell are they going to do a dinosaur? Because you know, yeah, even that one's interesting for coming out, and it was like, how the hell are they going to do a convincing dinosaur on, on British television on a TV budget? But it was, um, it was just amazing. So uh, I was highly sceptical about that actually, but uh, when I saw it, I was just, just blown away by it. It was, uh, it was great. Yeah. And there should be more sequels with dinosaurs in there. There's quite a few single characters I'd love to see by dinosaurs. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs>